the 1960s, Pat Neary was one of only a handful of dancers at New York City Ballet, under the watchful eye of the great George Balanchine. The Russian-born choreographer, who died in 1983, is considered by many to be the 20th century's most influential classic choreographer. He was a master at moving enormous amounts of people around a stage. But by 1967, the intense competition for Balanchine's attention and affection, coupled with jealous rivalries among principal dancers like Suzanne Farrell and Mimi Paul, became too much to bear for Pat. It was time to move on. My whole life changed because I left the company. I went to Europe, I started teaching his ballets, I started directing. I never would have had this incredible, phenomenal career if it hadn't been for Suzanne. At age 29, with Balanchine's blessing, Pat became a repetiteur, a French word for a person who directs rehearsals. Very few people had ever been granted the right to restage his ballets, but George Balanchine trusted Pat. He called her his European representative. With no video cameras back then or film to remind her, Pat relied on taking detailed notes, mainly on the musical counts in a ballet. She began with the four temperaments. He accompanied me on about five or six of my stagings of it in Europe. And what I found fascinating was every time I go, no, 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 no more hand, do that, bigger plie, lunge, head up more, you know. For the next 20 years, Pat traveled and taught Balanchine ballets extensively. Ballet mistress of the Berlin Opera Ballet, director of Geneva Ballet and the Zurich Ballet, ballet director of La Scala in Milan, artistic director of Ballet British Columbia, plus Paris, Amsterdam, Leningrad, Athens, an impressive tour of artistic duty. Every single detail that he gave me, or that I guess that I learned from him, I believe has to be there. And there's no reason it, it shouldn't be there or couldn't be there. Even now, some four decades later, when it comes to teaching Balanchine, Pat remains steadfast in her method. And I start immediately in the rehearsals to speed up the tempos because I find that's one of the hardest things for a lot of dancers to do. They don't, they want to dance slow. You know, they don't want the tempos to be too quick. And everything Mr. B does, you know, from theme and variations to Simon and C, it has a, 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 a wonderful attack to it. And it's not boring. If you have technique, you usually don't have any problem to do his ballets. If you can jump and you can pirouette and you can extend if you're a principal, you have no problem to dance Balanchine. Using his original steps and distinctive hand gestures, she teaches in the same unique style that Balanchine taught her with. That means being just as strict and just as precise. He was a hands-on corrective choreographer who wanted to see his details in every single ballet there. And that is something I learned when he first designated me to teach four temperaments. Most importantly, she never strays off script to make changes to classic Balanchine choreography. I find that um, one of the problems for me is keeping those ballets that these great choreographers have done or created, keeping their wishes and their choreography in such a way that we um, appreciate it and also understand that this has been passed on by people. Balanchine's work is so strenuous and so demanding that any company who wishes to perform it must officially apply to the Balanchine Trust and prove that they indeed have the skill. But it wasn't always this way. I just think that certain things should have been respected. And years ago, I saw these changes happening, um, even in some stagings that I had seen abroad. Before the policy existed, Pat says some ballet companies were making changes to the choreography that Mr. B would never have approved. I actually have told people they need to get me in a straitjacket and remove me from the audience because I'm going to go insane. And I reported them and I said, I think we need to get a meeting together of everybody that works in the trust, in the Balanchine Trust, that are teaching his ballets, and we need to agree on a version. Today, after a company gains approval, 
Only a teacher from the Balanchine Trust can take the company's dancers through this challenging choreography. Pat feels it's the only way to keep the master's vision intact. I am, have been very vocal about this and very verbal about it because there will be a time, uh, as we know, in maybe 10 years or so, where we are not going to be able to actually preserve these works uh, by people that have worked with Balanchine even. That is a problem for me and it remains a problem. As a tireless ambassador for his work, Pat continues to teach at companies around the world. Over the years, she's worked with many great dancers and has plenty of stories to share, like this one about Rudolf Nureyev. And I've had Nureyev throw tea at me and things, you know, because I lied to him about something once. I said that we had a 20 minute break and we actually only had a 15 minute break. And after 15 minutes, he said, where's the company? And I said, um, well, it's actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's actually a, a longer break. And he went and he just picked up his tea and threw it at me. Never mind. Or this one about the jealousy Mr. B felt towards a young Mikhail Baryshnikov after he brilliantly danced a Balanchine ballet. The critics came out. They said, well, this company has never danced better because Misha was on stage and it brought up the company and Mr. B was furious. He said, you know, Misha has nothing to do with the training of my dancers. I made every single dancer in this company, except for Baryshnikov. And therefore, what did they mean that he made them better? I make them better, not Misha. With experience like that to draw on, Pat is still thrilled to nurture new talent and share these stories as she keeps the Balanchine legacy alive. He, he actually uh, always thought I'd be a great teacher. I, I never quite understood how he saw that when I was 18, because I always think that that is something I've grown into and I love the shoe, I love the way it fits the shoe and I can't even thank him enough. I think what's difficult for me nowadays is I've been very spoiled by my, my wonderful career because I had Balanchine with me on a lot of my stagings. So I know everything that he really wants and it's lovely for me. Thank you, thank you everyone.